Hey everybody and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host Pepe Prons and as always don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Subscribers helps us build the channel and liking and commenting helps us in the search engine here on YouTube. Also don't forget to look in the upper right hand corner right now and look for the latest giveaways going on on the channel. Always something good going on on the channel. So today what we've got to look at is the Eosheen trash can. So this is the 2S little whoop that we've been waiting to see from Eosheen to see how their little product is going to come out for us now. Inside the box here we're going to get our little manual and this manual is fully loaded with everything you need to know about the boards, the chargers, setting it up in Betaflight and everything else you might need to know in order to run this. Now as you can see this little guy is running props out which is similar to what we saw in the Beta 75X but it actually works. We've also got a little bag here of extra props, screwdriver, and as you can see right here we've got an XT30 to change this out from the two JSTs that you would use as stock to run these little 1S300 MA LiPo batteries. And these are HV batteries and you get four of these in the box as well. And as you can see here, these are Yashin branded 40 to 80 C 3.8 or HV batteries. And like I said, you get four of those in the box as well. Uh, underneath the, the trash can itself here, we've got one of these uh, USB chargers that plugs into your laptop or your computer. And we have the trash can itself. So as you can see here, it is very similar to the Mabula's um, canopy and, and we have an adjustable camera which is awesome and that is a Cadex EOS in there so that's a 1200 TVL suite camera and it is quite nice to uh, look through when you're flying. We've got these uh, 803 1600 KV motors uh, also similar to the Mobula's motor size and um, very very powerful little motors as you'll see when we get to the flight footage. Now let's flip it over and take a look at the underside here. As you can see, we have our two GST 2.0s to plug in our LiPos with. And if you take a look here from the side, you'll see this is a two board stack. So you have your ESC and then on top of that, you have all your VTX and etc. on the top board. And you can see we have this little uh, straw type antenna. And that antenna is actually plugged into the board with a connector. So you could switch that out for something else, even if you chose to. Uh, very ratchety motors. So uh, magnet quality is pretty high on these. Uh, very, very ratchety little motors, actually. Now let's talk about some of the specs in this. Now it kind of is better sometimes to come out after uh, as we know then you'll know what the uh, the users have complained about or added as mods to their quads and this has a, a very durable frame I did some heavy crash testing on it into things from the air about 100 feet straight to the ground with no issues uh, they've added into this one a light bar in the back that a lot of people modded on there uh, they've added current sensors uh, filters We've got, um, what else, we've got, uh, we got telemetry on it and we have smart audio on it. Now, one of the big defects to me on this is this battery tray that I just showed you. They're loose, very, very, very loose. Uh, they eject in flight very easily if you're gonna fly acro. Um, I had a lot of issues with ejecting them and to the point of where you, you actually wanna make sure you drop some glue on that uh, that light bar in the back because when they eject they'll grab that wire and I almost lost my light bar immediately. But the interesting note is is when you change it out to the XT30, uh, these 300 ma uh, Beta FPV batteries fit perfectly into the frame with no slop at all. So. Uh, in another video here, I'm going to switch it out to the XT30 and see how it performs that way and let you know any other mods I've, I've had to do along the way. Another thing I don't like, as usual with a crazy board, is we've got uh, the receiver antenna is underneath it and you really 
never have anywhere good for it to go. I guess the philosophy there is it's usually above your head, so to have that antenna there is better for you to actually connect to it. Now, as I mentioned, this VTX antenna is also on a connector, so you could switch that out for a lollipop or anything you wanted to do when you start getting into the mod world on these things. Uh, some other interesting things about this guy that, that they thought about, uh, again, after everybody modded him, it is using a 6 amp uh, ESE. It's D-Shot 600 ready, so you can turtle mode it. Uh, like I said, we have the LED bar, uh, the um, the filter, the LC filters in it, and a current meter up to 28 amps. So they've done a lot of things uh, coming out, everybody, everybody else, that was, um, you know, issues with some of them. Uh, the Mavula 7, you know, again, I had no issues with it. My frame has yet to break. But in manufacturing, they changed something. They took a great product and turned it to me into crap. Uh, nobody can fly them for more than it seems one flight before they break them. But check out this uh, this light bar on this thing. Very sweet. Um, a mod that most people would have to do. And your lights below um, is on there for you. Uh, all, again, all at that target price of $100 we're looking at with this. And this thing is a ripper. Um, you know, I hate to... Give credit where credit was due, but um, Stu is uh, more of the racer guy, and he's unfortunately beat me out of the box again with his video. And um, they're flying it hard in a racing style through a park, and you can see how it rips if you go check out UAV Futures and check out Stu's video. You can see what he has to say, too. Now, uh, down the road here, if you should buy one and you're trying to figure out where that bind button it is, it's right here under that under that crossbar of the battery controller and the uh, the boot button is on the other side past this USB over here. Uh, kind of hard to find, uh, maybe it's just my eyes, but they weren't the easiest thing to find. It is clearly written in the manual over there, so you can find it in the manual. It was just tough for me to see and again, it, it might just be my vision that was doing it. Um, some notes i had to put this thing the camera angle at such an angle that i've never had to put one of these at um because it rips so hard and i was looking at the ground most of the time so i'm flying usually at 20 25 degrees and i was probably at 40 flying this thing so it's a ripper um let's jump in here to the smart audio this is where you can easily change out your vtx uh so what you want to do is move your throttle to the center and then pull it left and then take your pitch and throw it all the way forward and that will take you into this mode with smart audio. Um, then you can go ahead and come in and you can change your band and channel. I run best on E1 here in my neighborhood and you can set the power here goes uh, 25, 200 and 500, but they say it's only 200. I don't know why 500's in there, but I set mine to 200 because that's the max they said. And I think in the flight footage you'll see uh, compared to um, other flights, if you've watched my channel, the breakup is a lot less than it has been. And as you can see, you can check your profiles, features, miscellaneous, lots of other things you can check out in there while you're in smart audio. You could set up multiple uh, flight profiles and switch them with smart audio if you liked as well. So let's jump into the footage now. I'm going to take you through just a little bit of angle mode here in the beginning in order to just show you how the board performs in angle mode because again some people when they're racing whoops uh, like to run those in angle mode i know everybody thinks they're supposed to run in air mode but or uh, acro but you don't have to you can do whatever you want that's the fun part of this hobby do what you want enjoy it the way you like to so i always like to show a little bit of the So we're just going to tootle around a little bit here, get a feel for it. Um, in this particular flight, I was using the stock PIDs that came with it. It does come with, uh, someone has actually worked on the PIDs and, and set them. So uh, here's a little punch for you. Up and out, super powerful. We're going to switch it into air mode here and continue the rest of our flying on this battery. Now, like I said, it does come with a tune on it that looks like somebody physically did tune. It's very Mockingbird looking to me. Um, so some high numbers in there that you'd usually see in Project Mockingbird. But uh, 
nonetheless, that's what somebody has set up. I ended up going in and taking a bunch of the yaw out because some they had the yaw extremely high, and I don't use yaw that much. So that was all I had to change. Um, everything else was, was pretty much set besides changing your modes on your switches on your uh, radio. That was about it. As you can see, no problem, no prop wash, um, all the punches, all the flips are pretty much free of any of that. We're not getting the yaw spin that everybody believed was coming from the uh, props out on the Beta 75X. Uh, it's not an issue here at all. Didn't have it happen once. Again, the bulk of my problems were the small batteries ejecting out of the quad and then things would do all kinds of things of course because the batteries were flinging around as you did a maneuver uh this comes with uh right out of the box it is running beta flight 4.0 now if you don't know beta flight 4.0 is currently only accessible uh, if you switch your beta flight to allow you to see developer um or in development there you go. See, not a problem in the world. Not a washout. Right toward the ground. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so Betaflight uh, 4.0 is only able to be seen if you switch it to development. Uh, so it's not in a release state. And um, this comes with it out of the box, uh, which was really interesting um, to see. I hadn't loaded it on anything yet. Um, let's, let's check out turtle mode. You know, I like to check this out, make sure actually you can turtle mode in these things. Boom, no problem, turtle mode works, which is awesome. So we're gonna have this bit of footage and I'm gonna do another pack afterwards, doing a little bit more acro, a little less of that, um, that angle mode that you saw there and uh, do a little bit of ripping with it and I'll let you check it out. Uh, the end of that video, I'm gonna fly it straight into the side of the house. Uh, I didn't film all the crashing I did for durability testing. Uh, but I flew it into that big tree, I flew it into the house, I flew it into a car, uh, across the street right over here, went straight up like that, but about twice as high, and actually had my batteries die. I was using some older batteries on one of the flights, and um, I guess I threw out that footage, but uh, I wanted to put it on there for you, but I went up probably about 100 feet, and the batteries completely died, and it dropped out of the sky. Uh, right on its top uh, top slash side uh, no broken frame no broken canopies uh, the only things once again I can say that I think are an issue on this is as you can see there's some pretty heavy vibration in the camera um, I'm gonna work on that and see if I can dampen some of that out but there's some pretty heavy vibration in the camera both in the footage and in, and when you're flying then we have um, these batteries falling out, uh, but that's going to be simply handled by uh, just adding an insert to take out some of that space in your batteries. To uh, to and you can do that with cardboard or anything else to take out the slop. So that's one of the things you're going to have to think about. Um, so those two things really are the, are the issue, uh, which as far as I can you know am concerned, we've got a really 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 good one here. Uh, after the Mobula 7, I won't say that this is drone of the year or or this or that or other things. I'll, I'll let you guys look at what it is and, and let you know that, that I've done the work crashing it this time, making the efforts to make sure it's durable, and it seems to be very durable. I'm sure somebody's going to be able to break one. We all can break one. You know, everybody seems to be able to break something. So just keep all that in mind um like i said very good awesome little quad price points awesome um it seems to be durable and uh besides that battery falling out thing there's really no issues they've thought about all the mods and and they've thought just about everything so so it pays to come in um, at the end of of a, of a rave you know because then you know what everybody wants so as always guys don't forget to like subscribe and comment on this video and look forward to more videos on this particular machine as I switch it over to the XT30 and all these other little things as they come up on it. But look for uh, look in the comments in the description below. I will have uh, a link to this and any coupons available for it right now at the making of this video. I have a coupon good for the first 300 people that gets you an extra 12% off. As always guys, happy flying. Hey guys, 
guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the Quadcopter Review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV-related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying-only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. And thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe, and happy flying.